Thank you very much, everyone. Um, uh, this is the uh, the, the second uh, oops <laughs> the second panel discussion of um, uh, this uh, sixth summit of uh, um, uh, space sustainability. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Secure World Foundation and the uh, government of Japan to uh, organize this uh, wonderful summit and um, uh, having this uh, uh, very important uh, uh, theme for the discussion which is the responsible behavior in space knows no bound. Unfortunately, I mean, this summit has a full of uh, sessions with uh, very interesting names, like uh, next one is uh, Hello Kitty Goes to Space, and uh, the, ne next, the other one is uh, about uh, Stand on the Left. Uh, this is a very particular you know, Japanese uh, behavior on the, uh, on the escalators. <coughs> but uh, uh, unfortunately, we do have a very serious uh, uh, subject uh, or title of this uh, of this panel. This is the uh, session to discuss about uh, space sustainability from the um, Asia Pacific perspective. Um, yes, of course, the space is a global commons, and uh, there is no border, there is no region, there is no territory in space. But the governance of space requires the international cooperation among states. The the Asia Pacific, which is a growing region for the uh, space activities, is now being a very center of the um, uh, activities uh, uh, and also the, the center of discussion for the, the, the responsible behavior in space. And especially there are a number of um, newly developed uh, states um, for, for, so for example, the South Korea has recently uh, established uh, uh, aerospace law, and uh, 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 Philippines uh, in, uh, in the last few years has been very active, but you know developing the uh, new law and also a space agency. So there are there are uh, a very much of the uh, active region. The Asia space uh, Asia Pacific is a, is a very active region, uh, but at the same time we need to know and we need to be conscious about. What are the responsible behavior in space? So we have, for, for discussing this uh, very important issue, we have the very fantastic uh, sets of people in this panel. So um, uh, there, are, there are sort of a mixture of uh, family name, given name, given name, family <laughs> name. So I'll, I'll just all go through with the given name and the family name. So first, uh, we, uh, I do have the uh, mention uh, Chua from uh, Singapore. Uh, he's a uh, deputy director of an international security uh, emerging technology. Uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Yurika Ishii, uh, who is uh, associate professor of the National Defense Academy. Uh, uh, Ambassador uh, Helmut Lagos, uh, uh, former uh, chair of the Open-Ended Working Group on, on re reducing uh, space uh, threats uh, uh, from Chile, and uh, uh, Dr. Su Hin Li, uh, Sung Hee Li, sorry, uh, from Contex, and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Damongrit uh, uh, Niam Niamot. Uh, I'm sorry if I pronounce uh, uh, wrongly. Uh, he's a deputy executive director of the GISTA uh, uh, from Thailand. And uh, uh, last but not least, uh, Dr. Uh, Gay Jane uh, Perez, uh, who is uh, uh, deputy director general for space science and technology from the Philippine Space Agency. So it is uh, um, wonderful to uh, to have these uh, uh, people. And I last. Uh, I, I would like to first uh, go around the questions um, about um, uh, the uh, start with a, a recent discussion of the open-ended working group and uh, uh, Helmut, you'd be the, the best person to talk about uh, what happened in the uh, open-ended working group uh, and uh, uh, what it attempt to achieve and what it end up with. Thank you very much. Um, it is a, a, a difficult uh, topic. It, I could elaborate, but I will not do that now. So I will stick to the timeline. <laughs> right. Uh, and uh, despite of the fact that I would have preferred to be on the panel about uh, Hello Kitty in space, <laughs> uh, I, I will try to answer your question. So uh, some of you may recall that there, is, there was a process uh, that started with the resolution of the United Nations General Assembly, which was resolution 76231 where the General Assembly decided to convene 
uh, an open ended working group uh, with the following mandate. So it was to take stock of existing legal and other international frameworks relating to threats arising from the behavior of states with respect to outer space, then to examine current and future threats by states to space systems and actions, activities and omissions that could be considered irresponsible. And finally, to make recommendations on possible norms, rules and principles of responsible behavior in relation to state threats to space systems, including as applicable, how they could contribute to the negotiation of legally binding instruments, including on the prevention of an arms race in outer space. So we had a, a, a very thorough and, and I would say uh, intense, sometimes difficult discussion. Uh, finally, uh, we were able to uh, uh, draft a report which did not enjoy consensus and on the final day uh, there are some geopolitical reasons for this that uh, I understand that most people uh, uh, know very well, uh, so I'm not going to elaborate on that. Uh, but I do invite uh, uh, everyone to look at the report, which is in, in the website of the United Nations. And uh, uh, even though it is not a consensus report, it does enjoy a, a very broad support from delegations and it, 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 it reflects uh, our discussions. So I would like to just mention a few of the main threats that were identified uh, in the report. So uh, one of them uh, is relate, relates to damage and destruction of space objects mm -hmm. or use of space objects uh, as weapons. So the discussions uh, in this regard re focused on refraining from any uh, del deliberate act that could cause uh, physical damage or disabling or destruction of other states' uh, space objects, uh, including where acts uh, are expected to result in the generation of space debris, which is uh, an important uh, topic that was already <coughs> mentioned in the previous panel. Also, uh, many delegations express concern about the development and deployment of space objects for hostile uh, purposes. Uh, so, in this uh, sense, uh, uh, these delegations um, advice against the development, production and uh, deployment of uh, weapons in space uh, for any purpose. That is one of the other controversial uh, proposals that did not enjoy uh, consensus. And also another threat that, that was identified is the interference with the normal and safe uh, uh, operation of space objects. Uh, so this is indicated that states should avoid deliberate acts that could actually intervene with the functioning of space objects under the control of, of, of states. Um, as such acts of interference may give rise to, to, to conflicts and tensions and, and may even turn into some escalation and, and conflict on, on Earth. Right. So I, I will leave it there for now. Okay. Well, thank you very much. So the intent and the government um, uh, willingness of engaging into this um, space sustainability is, is extremely important. So, um, Gay, I, I, I'd like to ask you about the Philippines. And the Philippines were, was a very extremely uh, active member in the OEWG uh, and uh, submitting uh, numerous working group reports and, uh, and many, leading many discussions. What is the, <coughs> the reason why Philippines took such a priority? I mean, wh why Philippines are so engaged? Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Kazuto. And uh, first of all, thank you to uh, Secure World Foundation for having me here. Now, uh, allow me to answer that question by first describing what our, our priorities are. So uh, when the Philippine Space Act was signed into law, <coughs> Uh, five years ago, it sets the goal for us to be a space-capable and sp space-faring nation within this decade. Um, realizing this goal means that we can access space and has the capability to maintain our sovereign space asset or infrastructure. Um, this means that um, it's in our interest, therefore, to keep space safe, secure, and stable. Our work in the OEWG allows us or underpins this aspiration. We recognize that um, as more space actors emerge, both um, state and non-state, 
uh, there is an urgency to come up with um, rules-based international order that defines the responsible use of space. And it is increased uh, as an emerging space actor, it's important for the Philippines to have a voice in this conversation. These benefits, uh, the benefits that can be drawn from space is uh, tremendous, especially for a country like the Philippines, uh, where there is a myriad of applications uh, that draws from space data and information. However, we are also vulnerable um, with our limited capability to, um, to protect us from space threat and also our geographical locations, which uh, naturally puts us on the path of uh, space launches. Uh, we are receiving or getting debris in our exclusive economic zone, affecting our f uh, fishing and maritime activities. So uh, it's therefore um, important for us to bring this narrative in the discussion. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the, uh, open and in the open-ended working group, uh, we as spouses, um, principles of due regard, which is already uh, there in the Outer Space Treaty. So this is something we can uh, build on. Mm -hmm. And I think with uh, increasing uh, transparency, uh, cooperation, and um, uh, we can avoid misperception uh, and misunderstanding, which will give us uh, or which will lead to a safer and more uh, secure and uh, less threats in outer space. So thank you. All right. Thank you. I, I think the due regard is going to be appeared in uh, different panels uh, uh, throughout these two days. Um, so, uh, turn to Meng. Um, uh, Singapore was also a very active participant, and, uh, and Singapore is also a part of, uh, as well as the uh, Philippines, a part of the ASEAN uh, community. So, uh, what, why has uh, Singapore opted to uh, participate in, uh, in this uh, multilateral discussion, and what did you hope for to, to achieve uh, in, in this uh, open-ended working group? Thank you. So, we would first, I would first like to express my thanks to the Scale World Foundation for organizing such a panel, and to add on the point that they have very interesting space titles, including Hello Kitty is Serious Business. <laughs> uh, we have had uh, experiences with... Uh, Hello Kitty having a worldwide phenomenon in at least in particularly seen in the Southeast Asia region. So going back to the question, Singapore is very much supportive of all practical approaches when it comes to space security. Our interest or our participation in these uh, multilateral fora and regional for platforms, they are underpinned by two main interests. One is that Singapore, like all other ASEAN member states, we see that as we see space, or we have an interest in space being an accessible platform, uh, accessible domain for all. So we are particularly concerned about the competition that we see in space today. You have rising capabilities, both from developed countries and as well as commercial or industry developments. And for that, we have to recognize that space has become a very important domain for technologies, they underpin many of our banking systems, our maritime uh, traffic, and so on. And to this extent, it has become an inevitable portion of our daily lives. We need to protect these technologies, we need to protect access to these technologies, and at the end of the day, we need to protect access to space, because many of these technologies, all of these technologies are enabled by satellites in space. So having the access for countries, for governments, for the industry, is of paramount importance, and we see that access to space should be a priority for all countries. Right. Our second concern is we see multilateral platforms, existing multilateral platforms such as the UN, being the most effective way to engage the international community on issues on space security. As what was mentioned earlier, space is a common domain uh, for us all, and only at platforms such as the UN where we are able to engage every single country that we see that we could potentially see some level of consensus moving forward. So <clears throat> Singapore is Singapore participates in the OEWG organized uh, from two years ago. We are also an active participant in the US General Assembly First Committee as well as we as well as the Paros GGE where we attended the intersessional meetings. 
So on many of these things, we see that the Outer Space Treaty remains a fundamental instrument of international space law. And once we do get universalization of the Outer Space Treaty, and for all countries to agree to, there is, to, agree to such fundamentals, and we could progress to speaking about all the other current issues, modern issues that affect us today. Thank you. Right. Um, thank you very much. Uh, yes, the space infrastructure is not just you know, between the space and Earth, but it affects on, the, uh, on whatever happens on the ground. So I think the uh, protecting the space assets is, is also protecting the ground. Yes. So turning around from uh, uh, OE, OEWG, I'd like to move on to the more uh, national uh, issues. So Ishii-sensei, I'm sorry, I, you know, it's awkward to speak in a sort of first name basis. So Ishii-sensei, um, the Japan and the United States have recently co-sponsored the resolution on, in the United Nations Security Council that, uh, that would have the, re reminded the countries that outer space treaty obligation not to place uh, nuclear weapons or weapons of mass destruction. So why did Japan co-sponsor this resolution and why nuclear weapons in orbit uh, considered to be so threatening to all space users? Thank you. And first, I'd like to start off by thanking uh, Secure World Foundation for the kind invitation. Uh, answering to your question, uh, let me explain the context because the proposal of the resolution is, in a sense, a part of uh, the, a long continuing debate concerning uh, the arms race in the outer space. So on the one hand, uh, Russia and China has continued, have continued to promote the idea of the prohibition of the placement of weapons of all types uh, in, in the outer space since the, since the early two, 2000s. However, on the other hand, uh, many other space-faring nations, including Japan, have opposed uh, th this f standpoint for a number of reasons. Uh, one is that, that the most space objects are of dual use, so uh, it is impractical to define what a weapon is uh, in the other space. Uh, and also, uh, it is not productive to look at the capability of the space objects. Uh, so the prag pragmatic approach would be to look at the behaviors uh, and require the, 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 uh, uh, the actors uh, to be responsible and uh, professional. So uh, those uh, views uh, regarding the characterization of the weapons are not mutually exclusive necessarily, but uh, there are uh, uh, clear differences among nations. So uh, as uh, Suzuki Sensei mentioned, mentioned uh, in April, uh, the United, Nations, United States and Japan co-sponsored a draft resolution affirming uh, that the placement of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction, or WMD, uh, are, are, is prohibited. Um, this is, uh, as you know, uh, against the background that there has been, you know, uh, the, the uh, view uh, that the Russia has uh, have had prepared satellites uh, that can inspect and attack other satellites uh, in low Earth orbit. Uh, so the the draft resolution uh, obtained 13 votes uh, in the Security Council. Uh, but was blocked by Russia, while China abstained uh, from the voting. Then in May, uh, Russia introduced another draft resolution calling upon the state prevent for all time the placement of weapons in outer space, but the resolution did not obtain the required number of votes. So there are you know, several uh, plausible reasons uh, why Japan co-sponsored uh, this resolution. One is uh, obviously uh, to reinforce the rule of law. Um, the Outer Space Treaty explicitly prohibits the placement of uh, weapons of mass dest destruction in orbit. Uh, and also, uh, as Gay mentioned, uh, state parties shall be guided by uh, the principle of cooperation and mutual assistance, uh, and they have to comply with the obligation of due regard. So uh, it, it is not only irresponsible, but a clear violation of the treaty to put nuclear weapons or other kind of, kind, kinds of uh, weapons of mass destruction in the outer space. The, the other is, of course, is to maintain uh, peace and security in the outer space. Uh, as a technologically advanced nation uh, with a significant stake uh, in the outer space, Japan has a vested interest in, in, in ensuring uh, the space, uh, space remains a safe domain. And this also, this also uh, aligns with many other international efforts uh, to, to maintain uh, the international security in the outer space, 
uh, including the prevention of unarmed arms threats in, in, in the other space. Uh, there is also the joint statement of the leaders of the five nuclear weapon states issued, issued in January 2022 uh, that has been uh, cited uh, in the draft resolution. Um, so I will stop here in, in the interest of time. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, Sungi, uh, you are representing the uh, commercial company, and uh, Context is a uh, uh, Contact is a, uh, a growing business uh, in space. And from your perspective, um, does instability in space environment pose any challenges of the Context uh, global business? Yeah, thank you for your questions. Uh, so in order to make my answer, uh, uh, the most people understand the, our business areas. Uh, yesterday, I just made my keynote speech to introduce our company, the business area. The, uh, we just provided a uh, GSAS service, ground station agent service to receive the satellite media data from the, uh, a lot of our customer satellite. Nowadays, we just support more than 100 satellite to receive their data with our the global retro. Also, we just provide the uh, satellite image processing. So yeah, nowadays we also provide a whole solution to our government, the defense and the intelligence agency. Uh, yeah, actually, the, nowadays, as the South Korea and Japan, the, we have a quite a tension. Uh, this, those countries quite a tension area uh, due to the uh, North Korea. Uh, that's why the, our government would like to launch the, the, the a lot of the SAR satellite uh, uh, to be launched in the near future. Mm -hmm. Also. Uh, they also monitored the uh, North Korea satellite, also how to protect our government satellite from the, the other enemy satellite to maintain uh, our space, uh, space security asset, uh, something like that. So, but if a certain yeah, the country just uh, uh, destroyed uh, Korea government or Japanese government space asset, uh, it's quite a big issue to maintain our peaceful uh, space area, also to depend the uh, those kind of country. So the, the most commercial company also involved in this kind of project, uh, how to support our government. The government, without any commercial company, the government cannot do that because commercial company provide their technology to support the space assets to protect the those kind of country. So, but yeah, sometimes I just would like to example one example. You know, certain times the North Korea hacker just uh, uh, the communicate, not communicate, just attack the uh, certain satellite. If they just control by themselves, actually the we we can lost uh, our government satellite, not on our government satellite, the context context satellite. In that case. Uh, we cannot do that. So how do we just depend the, uh, from the, their attack? So nowadays, actually, the, or also, if this kind of situation is a fear at the time, uh, also our business shall be disappear. Also, same things. So you know, in order to make the, this kind of the happening, the nowadays we not only contact contact and the other uh, commercial Korea company just start to make the uh, cyber security how to protect uh, any command from the enemy and any hackers. Also, how to protect our government data, data center uh, with a special security algorithm. So it's quite important things. So yeah, anyway, but the other, on the other side, yeah, because of the, this, kind of, this kind of normal situation, uh, we have a, a lot of the peace opportunity. Yeah, we can also launch uh, our the second satellite, other uh, satellite to provide uh, our high resolution image data to the, our government. If our government has a lot of their satellite, they would like to portray the commercial high resolution image data. It's like the 0.3 meter resolution. Also, they would like to have the service space-based SSA to monitor, to locate, to find out the enemy satellite location from the commercial satellite. It's like the space-based SSA. We can provide this kind of service. Also, in the positive side, okay, our piece uh, could be expand <laughs> because of this kind of situation. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, thank you very much. So uh, it's both the you know it's a it's a business to do the SSA and the uh, uh, and the services for for the security. I mean, the space sustainability will also makes you uh, 
I mean, it makes you busy because of this uh, um, uh, very con congested uh, orbit. So, uh, dumb on grid. Um, that dumb wrong grid. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, so Thailand has been a very uh, heavy user of space. I mean, uh, your uh, agency, Jista, is also a very much of the user of uh, satellite data, and um, this would affect uh, if the the access or use of space was interrupted. Right. So. Um, so it's a similar question, uh, but uh, what uh, concerns that Thailand has uh, about security and sustainability in the space environment? Um, <clears throat> thank you for, for the questions, and also I would like to, first of all, I would like to thank the, the host, CKO Foundation and Cabinet Office of, of Japan <coughs> to organize this very in, interesting discussion. I think, as you, you just mentioned, we, we are the users of uh, space data for a long time. And <clears throat> at some point, we also um, developed our space technology, like we have the satellites, uh, and we're going to plan for constellation of Earth observation. I think there are many aspects that we, we have to consider. The first thing is, like, when we are talking about constellation for Thailand, like Earth observation or um, IoT satellite, for example, so we have to protect our satellite also from the collisions. And this is what we have done for a long time for our first uh, Earth observation satellite, Thai Short TIOS-1. And <clears throat> we can see that this kind of the collision of wide end is something that's very important. We are not foresee to have like the collision, I mean, the, when we have the mission. The second thing is like the, we can see the impact of the breeze in our land, our, our territory, I can say. We have um, <clears throat> our people still wonder what it is. They say, oh, this is the bomb from the air. <laughs> you know, like there is the bomb. And the police just call us to make investigation. They believe that this kind of thing is like, you know, like um, airplane and or helicopters crash on the ground. Luckily, it's in the um, forest area. So no one uh, get injured or any damage. And we can observe that that uh, debris impact is not only in Thailand, but also a part of Thailand, Laos, and this, oh, or get a lot of the attention to, to the government. And not, not only that, we, we um, got a call from the Navy that we observe some kind of tank in our sea. So we have to in make investigation what is the tank. That kind of thing is, the, I mean, the situation in, in Thailand and is increasing. So the National Space Policy Committee of Thailand just approved the concept of, uh, you know, like the SSA, STM, space weather thing to be called space security for Thailand. And that kind of thing is very important to us also because it's some kind of the big milestone, I mean, from the users to be like the um, one of the um, um, participants in this kind of discussion um, because we believe that not only like that to protect our land, our people, it's something that we have to communicate with the players, you know, like the, when there's the launcher from India, so we have to communicate with them because the, it, the territory is also to Thailand. This is just example. So I think like the discussion in countries and international is very important. That's why we are in, on the stage for this. Right. Um, thank you very much. So we have another 30 minutes left, and I'd like to um, go into the uh, uh, questions. But before that, I, I'd like to go to the second round of uh, questions. But given the time limit, uh, I, I, I need you to be very short. Um, so, Gay, um, the Philippines is also a member of a group of governmental experts, GGP, uh, GGE, um, uh, for the, on the future uh, further practical uh, measures uh, for the prevention of the arms race in outer space. And um, this, uh, while the um, OEWG 
worked uh, through the non-legally binding initiative, but this is focusing on the legally binding initiatives. So uh, does the international community have to choose between the legally binding or non-legally binding uh, commitments or approaches to the sustainability of space? Well, thank you for that question. Uh, first of all, um, I'd like to express our gratitude for uh, the Philippines being uh, present or giving us the chance to be present in both uh, the GGE and the OEWG. That said, I would say um, mm. countries should not choose. I think it's okay to be uh, participating in both uh, legally binding and non-legally binding uh, discussions. Uh, as we have heard since this morning, uh, there are um, still many issues uh, that needs to be uh, discussed. Uh, we are all working together to define norms, rules, and standards. And the more actively we can participate in this fora, whether it's uh, legally binding or not legally binding, I think it's better for everyone. We get our voice heard, uh, we set our narratives, um, and uh, it's very important. So, yeah, I guess uh, I'd say it's complementary, this two. Uh, right. Thank well, you. of course, there's, uh, there's a trade-off between the legally binding and non-legally binding, but uh, the most important thing is that everyone gets on the ground, I mean, uh, put everything on the table and make sure that everyone recognizes each uh, positions. So in, uh, uh, when it comes to the uh, positions, I, I'd like to ask men about uh, Singapore. Um, there will be a new two new OEWG uh, on the space security issues uh, starting from next year, and uh, Singapore and ASEAN countries. How, does, uh, how do they uh, anticipate the participating in these two uh, new OEWG? Thank you for the question. So Singapore is committed or will commit to both OEWGs, so we are glad that this time it's an OEWG which fosters a large international community to get, take part instead of the more exclusive uh, GGE platforms. So we are of the view that these non-binding instruments and the binding um, LBIs for the discussions between the two OEWGs can be complementary and they do not have to be viewed as exclusive even though they touch on different issues. We understand that these different platforms have certain historical basis but at the end of the day, what we should be looking forward are practical approaches that will enhance space security at the end of the day. So I would like to highlight two pressing issues that we hope to see certain movements at these OAWGs. The first is regarding space debris and those largely caused by intentional activities. So we see that the access to space for every country is important. And as our, my colleagues from Southeast Asia has highlighted, the regions around the equator is at risk for falling space debris. In fact, this region faces up to three times more likely the risk of falling space debris compared to the rest of the world. So this remains a pertinent issue for the Asia Pacific region. The second point is we would like to see more transparency when it comes to satellite technologies, particularly rendezvous and proximity operations. These sort of uh, issues, we will need to create transparency on them, on, on them similar to what we have achieved with the Hague Code of Conduct, which provides a notification regime for space launches and rocket launches. So we could build on top of that and develop more transparency and confidence building measures to prevent escalation and miscalculations in space. So we will see that these OAWGs have a list, whole list of different issues that we have to consider. And if we are for practical outcomes, I would suggest, we would suggest that countries take a prioritization of these issues and see which are the more pressing ones that they want to solve and then we could have them as, a, as multiple stages instead of trying to address all the issues at once and having difficulties when it comes to the consensus text. So specific to ASEAN and Asia Pacific, I'm happy to say that for in the next coming months, Australia and Singapore, supported by the UN ODA, we will be hosting a series of workshops meant to improve capacity building for countries around Asia Pacific and ASEAN so that we could have a common understanding of how space affects countries such as those around us and how we are able to contribute actively at the OAWG. 
we have seen with, um, for example, the Philippines effort at the recent OAWG, where they developed uh, joint statements where 33 countries have come together in a cross-block initiative to get certain frameworks that are aligned and we hope to see that happening for the next two OEWGs at the very least. Thank you. Right. Uh, thank you very much. There's uh, a lot of hope. And uh, interesting that you mentioned the Hague Code of Conduct because I'm old enough to remember <laughs> that the Euro European, European Union has promoted the International Code of Conduct, which wasn't really finalized. But yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think that was a sort of a, you know, repeating, uh, you know, rhyming the, the history. Uh, okay, so Helmut, um, as a chair of a uh, recent uh, OEWG, um, you pushed very hard uh, the inclusivity of the uh, uh, inclusivity of civil society or non-state actors. Um, so, uh, would you recommend for uh, that uh, for the upcoming OEWGs for inclusivity of the non-state actors and uh, civil society? What other advice would you give to the chairs of the the next uh, OEWG? Thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Kasuto, for the question. Uh, if you allow me, uh, before giving you a, a, a reply to that question, could I uh, react to things that have been said? By yeah, yeah, sure. To give it some inter interactive... Yeah, yeah. Well, interaction. I mean, yeah. this is, <laughs> I think this this is, the, this yeah, is the best part of this yeah, live, yeah, yeah, live discussion. Yeah, yeah I, I would just briefly uh, like to, to support what the colleagues have said regarding the, this... Uh, uh, discussion, very old discussion, on legally binding versus non-legally binding measures. And in this regard, I would just like to say that this uh, 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 dilemma has uh, somehow paralyzed the discussions on space security in, in the last decades. Yeah. And, and it is really a false dilemma because uh, 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 we have seen in, in, in our process and also in others that those uh, states that are promoting these non-legally uh, binding uh, measures and initiatives not necessarily are, have a dogmatic position against the, the negotiation of legally binding instruments. So, so it is really a gradual process. And in, 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 in this sense, I would like to recall that in the group of governmental experts uh, on uh, transparency and confidence building measures, that was the last process that actually had a, a, a consensus report mm -hmm. and that I had the honor of participating in that process as well, together with uh, Peter Martinez. Uh, uh, the only conclusion of that document, of that consensus document, was that uh, uh, political measures and, and non-binding uh, uh, initiatives can form the basis yep. for the negotiation of legally binding instruments in the future. Yep. So that conclusion, I think, still stands mm -hmm. today. Uh, that was just a short reflection. All right. Uh, now to, to try to answer your question. Yep. Uh, uh, absolutely yes is the answer. Uh, inclusivity, I think, is key. When I say that uh, despite of not achieving a consensus uh, report, we cannot speak of a failure of the OEWG that I had the honor of chairing. Uh, it is because of this inclusive nature of this discussion that allowed uh, a, a richer uh, uh, consideration of the subjects. We need to recall that when the Outer Space Treaty was negotiated, uh, the so-called space actors were very few, and basically two in the beginning, uh, the spacefaring nations. And after that, uh, uh, the international community started talking about space actors. Nowadays, we cannot talk about space actors anymore because all states are space actors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some are spacefaring, there are different levels of development, but everybody, every state is a stakeholder yeah. and, and, and has something to do. So in our discussions, <laughs> in our experience, we had, were benefited uh, by the uh, participation of representatives from academy, from industry, and also, I, I need to highlight the importance of non-governmental entities, for example, as the ICRC, that uh, uh, they uh, facilitated a better understanding about the ap uh, applicability of uh, the norms of IHL. And there is a growing understanding and, uh, on, on that importance. So I think that is very important. So to, to, to wrap up, uh, I, I would like to also thank the Secure World Foundation and the government of Japan for organizing th th this conference that actually allows to broaden more the discussion. Yeah. And I am encouraged by the presence of so many young people because I think that uh, uh, we, we need to engage more uh, people from civil society in particular, uh, just like in the negotiations for the climate change uh, process and nuclear disarmament, other international causes. 
this is just as important and vital for humanity. Mm -hmm. Well, just to remind you that uh, this organizer, Secure World Foundation, is non-state actor. The government of Japan is a state actor. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> I think this is a yeah. this is a perfect place to discuss about this. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, uh, Ishii Sensei, I'd like to ask you, uh, uh, just briefly, uh, uh, respond briefly. Uh, the Japanese government announced that uh, it has decided not to dis uh, co uh, conduct a destructive dis uh, direct ascent uh, anti-satellite missile testing in order to prevent, uh, actively promote uh, uh, discussion on the international forum for concerning the development of uh, norms and responsibility of uh, norms of responsible uh, behavior in outer space. So this declaration has been signed by the uh, 37 countries and uh, this is a non-legally binding uh, uh, commitment. So how do you see that this, this uh, uh, unilateral uh, approach uh, and uh, how do you see it supports the multilateral norm develop, uh, developing processes and uh, how does it uh, enhance the space security uh, and sustainability? Thank you. So I, I believe that it is a significant step in developing norms uh, concerning responsi responsible behavior uh, in, in the other space. Uh, it is also noted that these declarations uh, led to the adoption of UN General Assembly uh, resolution uh, to the same effect in 2022. Now, um, uh, it, it is obvious that the destructive ASA tests create large amount of space debris, uh, which can rem remain in orbit for years, uh, and that would pose, of course, the collision risks uh, to the, the, the space sharing nations. Um, so I, I believe that uh, it is a positive step uh, to, to uh, develop uh, the norms uh, that would uh, create the sustainable uh, outer space uh, domain. Now, uh, in the ideal world, uh, from the standpoint of protecting the uh, space uh, environment, any sort of use of such destructive uh, use of weapons should be prohibited at any time, uh, including in the time of unarmed conflict. However, uh, these declarations and UN uh, General Assembly resolution do not get to that, to, to that far. Um, th these are only uh, on the missile testing. It does not cover the actual use, uh, in the, for instance, in the context of armed conflict. Uh, however, I think it is a great step. And uh, if there is, is to be a, a consensus uh, on any sort of use uh, of the prohibition of uh, weapons in outer space, that could be a form of ground. And I, I also would like to comment on the nature of the voluntary non-legally binding commitment uh, in constructing space security and sustainability. Um, now, uh, as uh, Gillian Helmut uh, has already mentioned, uh, I believe that uh, the distinction between LBI legally binding instrument and non-LBI is not significant in the context of maintaining the sustainability of other space. Uh, the, what is important is that, that those norms is to be effective uh, to maintain a sustainable use of the other space. Um, and uh, when, we, when we look at uh, other non-legally binding instruments, uh, uh, for instance, the, uh, the space debris mitigation guidelines, uh, those uh, guidelines actually uh, made an effective contribution uh, because for, for, for one of the reasons uh, for the effectiveness uh, for the debris mitigation was that many states included uh, the, these standards into their domestic laws and uh, implemented uh, those uh, instruments uh, in a legally binding manner. Now, uh, the other space is a uh, so-called uh, territorial domain, which means uh, the, the, there is no boundary, uh, as, uh, as the title of the panel says. And uh, any irresponsible behavior can adversely affect uh, that particular uh, space, uh, state or the, the, the operators. So uh, there, there is a common ground uh, for the international uh, cooperation, and uh, I think we can base uh, the, the effectiveness uh, of the non-legally binding instruments on that uh, basis. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Um, so, Sunhee, um, the Korean uh, space industry is very dynamic and the, the relationship between the government and, and industry is also very active. And how do you see uh, what sort of processes that is taken 
to for the Korean government to have uh, incorporating the concerns of the industry uh, for the um, uh, for the conversation on the uh, for the for the for the future and uh, what will be the uh, Korean position and uh, how do they take into account the the commercial interest? Commercial, yeah. Yeah, actually, as I told you in previous my the comment, actually, that we have a lot of interaction uh, with our government. Uh, yeah, uh, I I can say that the your I can say that my answer for your questions. Uh, nowadays, the for example, the in case of the contact, uh, we already defined the to take care of the, my company from the our government as a special security space company. Yeah, so if we just get a uh, certain data from the uh, not certain data, it's a, in a certain time, uh, and the Russia people or the Chinese people just contact to us. Okay, is it possible to use the, your ground station? Can you provide the, your image data to us uh, with, from the US server? So in that case, I always check uh, if it is possible to contract with them. The, without any the permission from the, our government. Yeah, because I don't know what is the end users or something like that. So we already interaction with our government. If our government denied to contract with the, those kind of the company or government, okay, we cannot do that, any business. So also, if, if our government just want to get uh, any support from, the, from us, to provide the, our uh, ground receiving service and the data service, also raise the communication, something like that, I said that we can support. But in order to make the more uh, space uh, security for the, our, uh, the, uh, our country. So yeah, but we have a lot of interaction like this. So in order to maintain this kind of the sustainable space security, uh, the more strong relationship between government and com commercial company are quite necessary. The, also, not only the Korea local area, we just make this kind of the alliance uh, with the, the other our the, uh, friend country, it's like the Japan or USA, something like that. So we need to make the commercial alliance, also country alliance is quite necessary. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we already did uh, did it so yeah uh, in the new picture I just uh, in my in my mind uh, I hopefully I just would like to make the more strong relationship between uh, commercial company uh, with Japan also Korea government mm -hmm. so we I already explained to you several space company in Japan yesterday is Imposella also pale blue something like that so, okay, we need to make the more power uh, to right. maintain uh, our speed security, yeah. Very interesting. So this is uh, touching upon the inclusivity. I mean, it's not just the government-to-government -government, uh, decision-making. Uh, it has to be included, all the stakeholders, uh, especially the commercial, right. uh, commercial actors. So, uh, uh, Dam Rongret, uh, the, the, in, in this region, there is something called the ASEAN Regional Forum, which is to discuss about the, uh, space security as well. And how does it work? And could you talk about what sort of a program that uh, be helpful for capacity building perspective and uh, uh, about um, some of the outcomes at uh, this space security workshop uh, in the uh, ASEAN Regional Forum? I think like the <clears throat> this uh, capacity building is very important. As I, I just mentioned before, when we get this kind of impact, debris impact, it's not only like one country, mm -hmm. and it's something like international. And also like the, um, <clears throat> we discuss in, 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 uh, internally, like the, in Thailand also, like this kind of thing is the long-term actions. What I'm trying to say is like the, when you trying to monitor something, uh, the object is not about one year, two years. It's maybe like 10 years, 20 years. And I say to my, 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 my staff like, okay, maybe like our satellite um, before in the re-entry to the earth and burn out, 
I may be like retired something. <laughs> so I, this kind of thing is that we have to think from, I mean, we have experience and from now on we have to make actions. And that action is like not really like to just to launch the satellite, but to think how to get it back. And that kind of capacity is not only like that we talk about, okay, so how to monitor things, but how to design, how to uh, monitor, how to share the data. <clears throat> Sharing of the data is also very important mm -hmm. because uh, you can see that uh, not only like Thailand can work alone, data can be distributed and also work together on, on that kind of things. So I think like in terms of capacity building is we have to talk in many aspects not only like the uh, one aspect can be can be solved to all yeah all right thank you very much so um we only have uh, eight minutes left so um unfortunately i cannot take all the questions but there are a couple questions uh and one uh, um, question that i like to pick up is that um and addressing to uh, um, since uh, the, the for the sake of time i'd like to ask gay and sung hee to to respond to this um what might your countries want or need from the global commercial space sector to help build sovereign capabilities? So what the commercial sectors can do to build up your national capabilities and, uh, you know, without, I mean, apart from the national, mm. you know, national, its, its own national capabilities. So, um, so he from uh, commercial side, but I start mm. with, uh, with Gay. <laughs> Uh, thank you for that question. Well, uh, we believe in public-private partnership. I think this was also uh, mentioned earlier in the in the panel, and I think that's one thing that the uh, private community can bring in our region: more um, investments, um, infrastructure. Um, Damrugli uh, already mentioned about how we in the region could. Um, have um, capacity building effort initiative, but this can be supported if we have uh, the private sector um, supporting these activities. He also mentioned about the data sharing, um, but there has to be uh, an investment first, um, laying down the uh, infrastructure where um, we can use to get data and uh, information. So I think uh, this is uh, very important for us in the region, and I hope that um, the uh, private sector can um, support us. Right. So he. Yeah. Uh, actually, the, I always I don't know if the, my answer is a right right uh, approach or not. Actually, the uh, when I when I have the discussion with our government, I always said to our government to also the other our the commercial company in Korea. Uh, yeah. Even if it, Government just make the uh, space policy. Okay, we will raising up uh, space uh, ecosystem like this. Also, we just make the uh, R&D technology to show the national power. Okay, national power is c uh, coming from the uh, government. Mm -hmm. But uh, in order to raising up the uh, sp space ecosystem, actually, it is uh, it is not easy. Only to only by the government. The, we just make the alliance uh, with not only Korea local uh, company, uh, with the Asian Pacific area or the in Europe and USA. So yeah, there are a lot of the sector to uh, make the more powerful uh, to make the more powerful space industry in Korea. Uh, the, yeah, the, actually the nowadays the satellite manufacturing, rocket manufacturing, ground station, satellite image process, it is quite a conservative area. We need to make the more people in business model to make the money. Without any uh, the revenue, it is not easy to make the sustainable uh, space ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So when I list on the Korea Stock Exchange market, the without any uh, under the 10 million US dollar revenue, uh, actually, actually it is not easy. If you if you want to go to uh, the public, you have to make the your revenue. Minimum 10 million US dollar. After that, the, you can make the more expanded uh, business of the world. So now that we have two listing company, now we have five company, uh, communication and satellite mobile uh, the uh, manufacturing company. Also, contact just make the ground station. But next year, I expect our whole revenue is more than 100 million US dollars. Mm -hmm. So I already the announced contact will be. 
airports and toilets in Korea. Yeah, I, 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 I can do that. So, but not only by contact Space Guru, yeah. we just make an alliance with the uh, Japanese company or actually the hopefully I just make the ASA, Asian Space Alliance, not space agency, mm -hmm. with a commercial alliance. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we can raise up the Korea space ecosystem in Korea, Japan, Thailand, Singapore. Yeah, yeah, that is in my mind. Right. Well, um, thank you. So, uh, you know, commercial market is global, but uh, the sovereign power, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's national. It's, it's always a tension between these two. Um, the uh, next question I'd like to ask Helmut and uh, Ishii-sensei for, for this is a little bit uh, uh, legal. Uh, are efforts like Artemis Accord or, and the International Lunar Research Station principle, uh, are they useful in uh, promoting norms and responsible behavior in space sustainability? Um, Helmut. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, uh, I think that, uh, that, that that is a very interesting question because uh, 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 sometimes when these new initiatives are proposed, there are some skeptics that say this is uh, uh, creating a parallel uh, regime and uh, this goes against the Outer Space Treaty. Uh, uh, my, my personal view is that that is not the case because uh, there is a, a common understanding that the Outer Space Treaty is actually the cornerstone and as I call it, the, the constitution of the, of the international uh, outer space uh, legal regime. And uh, as a constitution, it, it actually gives the orientation, it doesn't uh, elaborate all of its articles, but, uh, but it, 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 it gives the orientation to, to, to further develop norms that are consistent with, the, with this framework. Mm -hmm. And these initiatives that you have mentioned, I, th I think uh, that uh, 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 are both very, very interesting. And uh, 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 my country, Chile in particular, is, is looking at them with, with interest because it is an example of, of uh, uh, proposals that uh, uh, different uh, states are, are making and, and that al allow for more, more collaboration between states and, 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 and also uh, uh, the other actors. And uh, I think that in, in that regard, it, it is a good example of, of, of the consequences of all these discussions that we are having. Right. Thank you. If you say it quickly. Uh, thank you. Um, I also echo uh, Helmut uh, that those uh, agreements are uh, useful uh, in establishing the, the, what, what the responsible behaviors are, the concepts of uh, the responsibility uh, in the other space, um, as especially the Artemis Accord, which has been published uh, in public, uh, talks, uh, provides the, the principles uh, for the, the governance. Uh, and uh, that it should uh, accord the internationally established uh, standards uh, in, in uh, conducting the activities uh, in, in the other space. Uh, so I think it is a great uh, effort uh, to collaborate with uh, seafar uh, sorry, uh, the spacefaring nations uh, in, in, in uh, the internationally uh, agreed uh, manner uh, in, in um, going through the, the uh, moon and uh, the, the orbit uh, and outer space. Right. Um, thank you very much. I think this has been a very rich panel. Uh, I think it's not really, the, uh, you know, it's not always usual that we, we hear the different perspective from a different country in this Asia-Pacific region. And I think this was a very interesting to take into account what will be, what we, how we consider the respective and the responsible um, behavior in space. And I think uh, the panelists have done a, a great job. So, so please join me in thanking uh, the panelists. Thank you. <laughs>